on with a radon problem. You did. Yeah. And then I found out we were going to have a baby. So, you know, your study, it'd be a perfect room for my mother. Right. Now I need a phone number to fix a home with a mother-in-law problem. Hey. I'm in a pickle. Did you say baby? Do we have any ice cream? Protect your family from radon. Make your home safer. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. 1-800-SOS-RADON. Hey, Patty Moe from Let's Get Comfortable? Well, hello, Jimmy B. Also from Let's Get Comfortable. Remember when you were a kid and you didn't have a lot of friends? What are you talking about? I actually had a lot of Well, now you always will have a friend, Pat. Just search for WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM on Facebook. I'm still kind of hung up on the part where you said I didn't have any friends. So if you're socially awkward or just completely unlikable, it doesn't matter. WGNU will always be your friend. Tell them, Patty Moe. Um... Apparently, WGNU will always be your That's right. Search for WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM on Facebook and give them a like, and we'll all be happier and more popular. Let's watch and see what makes people like one person and not another. How long does it take to get to the forest? That's not far. What are we going to do? Hike? Sure. Are we there yet? Yep. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org, brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Welcome to the new John Simmons Show. After years of battling a gambling addiction, John found a hope and a future for his life through Christ. He has spent the last several years encouraging others to find joy peace and hope in their lives by walking out God's plan for their lives. Now, John wants to help you find the passion, vision, and faith you need to start writing out God's sentence for your life and help you add to it every day. Four lines are now open. Call or text 314-880-0808. Now, here is your host, the new John Simmons. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network, where you can find God's sentence for your life and become the new you, where we talk about finding passion, vision, and faith in your walk with Christ so that your life can overflow with joy, peace, and hope today. Welcome, everybody. Very excited to be with you on today's program. Streaming live over on Facebook. The video is up on the new John Simmons Show Facebook page. You can also follow us on your radio dial. Uh, look for newjohnsimmons.com to find out all the other ways you can listen to tonight's show. Share with a friend, if you would. We have a lot to talk about tonight, including something near and dear to my heart, which is a discussion about children's programming. <laughs> uh, this weekend... There's a documentary coming out called Won't You Be My Neighbor? That's a familiar phrase, isn't it? Uh, Mr. Rogers, many of us might be familiar with either from our childhood. Now, if you're a young person listening to this show, you might say, who the heck is that? And uh, he was Mr. Rogers had a show called Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Over 900 episodes aired on PBS over several I want to say decades, but I could be wrong on that. So Mr. Rogers aired in a lot of places for a long time, and he still has relevance today. Even if his show isn't as popular being aired as often as it once was, they created a documentary about the impact of his television show. It's being directed by Morgan Neville. I think we're going to have some people from the show on in the next week or so, we're hoping. Uh, so fingers crossed on that one. Prayers up. Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, we're going to share the trailer for that film with you on the air a little bit later. I'm very excited about this film. I love, as you guys know, watching visionary documentaries. And this is right up my alley. Mr. Rogers had such a, a vision for creating content that would help children. And he wanted to do it in a way that was loving. And he wanted to teach children how to love. It stems from the fact that he was bullied as a child and he didn't want any child to feel that way and that he wanted to create a program and songs that helped bring joy to children's lives and help them understand that they were special and unique. From my perspective, Mr. Rogers was a Christian man, even though his show wasn't a Christian show. 
He was a Presbyterian minister, I believe. And in an interview that I saw with him where he was, one of his only interviews where he talked about his faith, he talked about how it was, you know, it guided the morals of the show. And he said that sort of his show was guided by the two commandments of Christ to love God and love others. And these were sort of the themes of his show as he pushed forward for 900 episodes to encourage children and have quality content for the adults to give to their children, something that may or may not be existent in today's culture. We'll get into that a little bit later. So I have questions for all of you. Some people have already texted in or sent in their comments over on Facebook. So uh, the questions I want to pose today, and feel free to hop on the live stream over on Facebook and share your answers to these questions. You can also call in 314-880-0808. This is your opportunity to talk with us on tonight's broadcast about television programs and what they should look like, what they are looking like. Should we be letting our kids have all the screen time? There's all sorts of questions that this conversation can go down, and I'm interested in many of the questions. Specifically, we posted over on the Facebook page, if you go to the live stream of this particular show, look in the comments, and there's a number of questions, including a link to join the program if you'd like to join via your phone or via your computer. What shows do you think are best for your kids to watch today? What shows are you letting your kids watch today that you think, I really enjoy the fact that they have that to watch? Much like I'm sure many parents enjoyed having Mr. Rogers on every day at 4 p.m. or whatever time it was on in your neck of the woods. Is there a show like that for you or your parents today? And if you don't have children, is there a show that you remember growing up and watching in the last 20 or 30 years as a child? that has really touched your heart and you look back fondly at it and say, Hey, that was a good show. It, it had legitimacy. It educated. It also encouraged and it sort of had some staying power. What Christian shows do you watch today? I want to get into sort of the, the Christian based discussion on this as well. To me, I think about what am I going to let my kids watch? I mean, I have two kids One's a little bit older than two, but let's just say for this conversation, two kids under two. What am I going to let them watch growing up? I look at the lineup of Christian shows that are available for children today, and I'm not impressed for a number of reasons. The first reason that I'm not impressed is because there's not enough of it. There is not enough Christian programming out in the world today, period. The, we flood we flood apps and social media and small group resources with all of the teaching we can shake a stick at. We have a, a Bible study on every book of the Bible and every you know little thing someone can go through in life from grief to joy to pain to hurt to you know overcoming addiction. We have all of these resources available to others. But when it comes to our kids, I used to work at Lifeway. Lifeway sold a lot of children toys and resources. They had a lot of videos, but those videos, you would look at them and you wouldn't know half of what you were looking at. It's like the junk bin at Walmart. You're like, what is this thing? I've never heard of this show. Never saw that trailer. That was never in theaters. (laughs) And that's what it's like going into the Christian bookstore to get a movie. If it's not VeggieTales, which took up three-fourths of the Christian DVD shelf for the kids. There wasn't a whole lot of other programs out there. So that's number one reason I'm sort of wondering what's going on with our Christian programming for our kids right now. There's just not enough of it. It seems like we as Christians have decided that we're going to let the world produce all of the children's entertainment. I mean, think about it. The world has figured out that the way into our pocketbooks is through our kids. And so they create movies, and they create commercials, and they create apps designed to influence our children's behavior to buy the newest toy, to get the the newest cereal. And so they're marketing shows to children. And so the children market is the hugest market as far as media goes. You think I'm lying? It's not Star Wars. Star Wars might make a ton of money, 
But if you look and go back over the years, it like the top 10 films of that year as far as box office, you'll see the animated films take up most of that list. The Pixar films, Cars, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory. Just this, you know, the last couple years, Frozen and Moana and these movies that come out. These are the movies that are making money hand over fist. You can't make enough of them. The sequels are coming so fast you can't even remember what the last one is about because it's just got over. Yet you go to the Christian store to buy a a DVD for your kids <laughs> and you have to buy a Veggie Dales DVD that was made 15 years ago. Do you see <laughs> a difference here? I mean, think about it. We're letting the world create all of the entertainment for our children, or at least not, maybe not all of it, most of it. And as a parent of two young children, they're being flooded. Their life is flooded with possibilities to watch. We got that Netflix account. They have a whole category for children. And you go on there and there's hundreds of movies and TV shows. Maybe one out of a hundred, maybe one out of a thousand has any sort of faith-based themes in them. And if they do, they may not be well put together or well produced. There is a lot of things going on in the world today in regards to what we're showing our children. And I want to bring it up tonight as a Christian to talk about it with you, whether you're a Christian or not. Like, what are we letting our kids watch? Are we thinking about this? Is this something that we're concerned about or worried about? When I saw the trailer for this, Won't You Be My Neighbor, I was thinking, man, why isn't there a show like that today? Where is Mr. Rogers today? Where is the next Mr. Rogers? I'm hoping he shows up soon. Maybe we're going to have to find our own way to make a show like that. I've got some numbers for us. Everybody loves numbers, right? You want to hear some of the numbers? This is from Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood. This is a resource put together by Dr. Susan Lynn, who will be joining us on the program on the 28th, I believe. She is a doctor who has spent her time gathering information on how screens, commercials, advertisements, television and movies, how they affect our children and our and their ability to grow into adults and the types of behavior they exhibit and the types of things that are coming from so much time in front of these things. So they've done a lot of research on this and here's some of the statistics that they say are taking place on any given day. 64% of babies between one and two watch TV for an average of slightly over two hours, 64% of children two and under. So this is my two kids. And I can tell you that they watch TV. And I would say that it's it's two hours at least. You know, you watch 15 minutes before you go to school because they go to daycare. We call it school. You, you watch it for a half hour afterwards. You maybe watch a movie at the end of the night. You know, we're, we're in front of the TV, or the kids are. I'm here doing the show, but I'm sure right before the kids went to bed, they're watching something. Before bath or after bath or something, after dinner, you know. Whether or not it's the same every night, they're getting their two hours in. And my kids are young and little. Imagine if they could go and play by themselves in their room or have a iPad that they got for Christmas where they can turn on Netflix themselves and just get lost in their room for four hours watching whatever show. Even if you've got the parental controls on them, they're watching something. Even if it's on the kids section of Netflix or Hulu or just on your regular cable TV, we're watching stuff. I'm not saying watching stuff is inherently bad. I don't believe that. I watch TV too. I'm not saying if you're a Christian, you should avoid all TV that isn't made by other Christians. That's not the argument that I'm trying to make today, guys. I'm just trying to bring some discussion into what we're showing our children. In 2011, so seven years ago, I don't know when this study was created, but Three million downloads just for the Fisher Price app for infants and toddlers. <laughs> An app for kids for toddlers 
was downloaded 3 million times. I imagine a number like that has grown exponentially, considering that apps and computer-based games and videos are more and more, and less and less are we having to go to the, the store to buy a handheld game and said, no, it's, it's on the parent's phone. Or A lot of kids are getting their own phones nowadays, or their own you know screen, whether it's an iPad or whether it's a, a Chromebook. I remember being so shocked when I saw my nieces and nephew who were like six or seven or eight when they got their first Chromebooks and thinking, what on earth are they using those for? Well, nowadays, that's in every school. Every kid has a computer just to do schoolwork. And I'm sure they're also using those same computers to get online and watch videos or watch TV. You know, TV like I grew up in watching where you had to actually sit down and you had a remote. Those days are gone almost. It's, it's all about right now videos and just getting on YouTube or streaming live on some app. Here's what the research says about how children thrive. It says that the research is tends towards developing children, or to say it this way, research tells us that developing children thrive when they are talked to, read to, read to, <laughs> played with, and given time for creative play. Interactions with other children and adults. Susan Lynn, who I've heard talk on this subject before, says that the top two ways that our children learn today's culture is creative play and watching their parents. So even if Mr. Rogers' show or something like it existed today, they're not going to learn more from watching a show, even if it's the greatest children's show ever created, then they're going to learn just by watching you. And guess what? All the studies say they watch you whether they say they're watching you or not. Our kids mimic our actions. If we're in sin, our kids are going to pick those sins up. If if we're nice to our neighbor, our kids are going to be nice to their neighbors. Now, is there exceptions? Absolutely. But our kids are watching us. They're going to want to watch the things that we watch on TV. They're going to like the sports teams that we root for. They're going to like doing the things that we like to do. They're going to want to eat at the restaurants that you like to eat at. This is just what life looks like. This isn't far off from where the the Bible comes on this either, by the way. Proverbs 22.6 says, Direct your child onto the right path, and when they were older, they will not leave it. You're training your child whether you realize it or not. You're training them to follow your behavior. And so we as adults, the best behavior we can find is to get near to God, flee from sin, and go where God wants us to go. Find his plan for our life and begin writing our sentence. If you want to be able to have children who grow up and do the things that you want them to do, it starts with us being an example for them. Before we even let them watch the television or find a great Christian show for them to remember as adults that they had such fond memories of. I want my children to grow up and be like me. Now, we also know that there's exceptions. Even the best, most well-trained Christian child can grow up and be a hot mess and, and just fall so far from the tree and vice versa, too. You can have a parent that was just not involved in the child's life, and they can come up, become a great Christian and become a, a powerful influencer in the community. The nature versus nurture debate. You know, that's not the conversation necessarily tonight that I want to have. But we understand that watching TV has an effect on our children. And if we want to have a positive effect on our children, this research says that they develop best when they watch us. So they should be around us when we're washing the dishes or when we're cleaning up the front yard or that we're reading a book instead of turning the TV on or that we're, you know, engaged in some sort of activity with them. As opposed to saying, just go play in your room. I want to have some me time. Not saying that there's not opportunities to have you time. Get my idea here, guys. God's plan for our life is to teach our children in the way that they should go. Why? Because our children are being influenced by our actions. And if we're going to let the world decide all of the shows that they're going to watch, because Disney and Pixar aren't done making movies, by the way. 
they're going to cash that cow as long and as far as they can. Meanwhile, as Christians, we're still relying on the videos and the tapes like Veggie Tales and Bible Answer Man and Little House on the Prairie. It's like we can't even get past and have a, a new show come up every year. We've got to have a new show come up every decade. We're behind the times here on what we're showing our kids, especially as a Christian parent, I think. I don't want my kids to be raised on Pixar. I mean, they can watch Pixar, some of them. This Coco movie I just watched was, there was murder in it. It was crazy. I can't let my kids watch that no more. There was murder in a Disney Pixar movie. There was a murder. I can't handle that for my kids. They're too young to see that. There are other Pixar movies they love, Finding Dory and things like this. Anyway, let's take a break. So when we come back, I want to continue this conversation about children's programming. What are the options out there? And what have the options been? We'll get into that discussion when we come back. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. Hey, everybody. New John Simmons here with you. Back in 2012, I found myself at the end of my rope for what seemed like the hundredth time. I cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life. What happened next changed my life forever. It took me out of my life where I was a gambling addict who had lost over $500,000 and allowed me to begin a new life in Christ where I found more joy, peace, and hope than I ever knew existed. I share the stories, including where I blame God for my father's death and the call into ministry that I found in my first book called Finding Faith. I also share with you the answers to the questions that I was asking God about what is faith and how can I move mountains with it. Finding Faith has those stories and so much more. I absolutely believe it can encourage you to find faith in your life today. Finding Faith by me, the new John Simmons, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble website, Walmart. You can also pick up a copy signed by me over at newjohnsimmons.com. Testimony House Ministries is the proud sponsor of the new John Simmons Show. We are so thankful for all of you who tune into the show, watch us live on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Without all of you, the new John Simmons Show and all the other Testimony House Network shows would not be possible. Please visit newjohnsimmons.com today and click the Partner With Us tab to help us continue sharing our message of the future and a hope through Christ with others. God bless. Are you interested in learning more about finding God's sentence for your life? At newjohnsimmons.com, there are articles and videos describing how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life by finding passion, vision, and faith. In addition, newjohnsimmons.com has a variety of ways for you to be encouraged to continue writing God's sentence. As always, you can hear the show live weekdays at 9 p.m. Central Time by clicking the Listen Live button when you visit newjohnsimmons.com. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class for an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 But wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons Show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay contact faithfully fit where they hope to strengthen your body in your relationship with christ call 314-239-4149 wgnu the talk of st louis broadcasting on 920 a.m and 106.9 fm want to see behind the scenes photos and get the latest news from the show all you have to do is follow at new john simmons on facebook twitter and instagram now let's get back to the new john simmons show Welcome back. New John Simmons show. 
here with you each weeknight at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, also on your Facebook live streams. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're talking about Christian programming. Speaking of Christian programming, this show is Christian programming, and it is available to you after tonight. You can watch this episode and all of our past episodes over at NewJohnSimmons.com. You can also find an archive on our Facebook page of all of our live streams. If you would like to uh, check up on some of the guests that we've had and just hear how to find passion, vision, and faith in your walk with Christ, how to find hope, peace, and joy, our show, our shows, uh, they, they, they cover these topics. And also, if you know someone who's looking to find God's plan for their life or they're just trying to find some encouragement or just a, a different kind of Christian show to watch, this is not a canned sermon. This is not a church service live streaming on your Facebook feed. This is something different. So if you want to support something different, uh, we are a, a nonprofit ministry testimony house. You see up in the corner there, this is a nonprofit ministry, and we want to be able to help other people find God's plan for their life. And you can be part of that simply by sharing this page, sharing this video, and sharing the things that we're doing with your friends and neighbors or your church. We have a message to share the gospel and to help other people find a hope and a peace and joy in their lives, their new lives in Christ. Visit NewJohnSimmons.com for more information about our ministry and our vision here at the show. Tonight's conversation, a discussion about Christian programming, specifically for children. This came up uh, because this weekend there is a, they're premiering Won't You Be My Neighbor. If you're on the Facebook live stream, you can see the, the movie poster for it. Mr. Rogers, we all remember, he was making more than 900 TV shows. I wonder if anybody watched all those. Any kid, like, I've seen every episode of Won't You Be My Neighbor. Because you couldn't binge watch, binge watch back then. There was no app to, you know, in a week you could just watch all 900 episodes. You actually had to catch them. And I remember TV back in the day, they had crazy, like, they would show like 60 episodes in a season. There was no like structure like we see it today. Well, there's like 10 episodes or 23. No, there was like 60. Like PBS was, they were one of the main people who did these things. Sesame Street has crazy seasons where like one season will have like 13 episodes and the next will have like 70. Yeah, PBS, Sesame Street, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Where are the shows like this today? So this movie comes out this weekend. I'm going to try and check it out myself, and I want to encourage all of you to be thinking about how shows like this can really impact our children. It hasn't been that long since I was a kid. <laughs> At least I don't want to think that it has been. But the amount of Christian programming that's been created since I was a child, the number is so minuscule, at least as far as popular content that has reached a massive audience. I, I mean, churches might make up their own children's resource movie or video, but if it's not being shown to millions of Americans and people are really enjoying it, like we see with the, the Disney movies and even uh, to a lesser degree, just any show on Netflix or television that has just a, a medium audience in comparison to other shows like it. Christian programming is such a small blip on the re, on the on the catalog of things like Netflix. And obviously you would say, well, it's not a Christian app. Well, I get that. But there, if there's a popular show, there are movies about faith on Netflix, by the way. If there is a popular movie, Passion of the Christ, which was one of the most highly rated and also highest grossing movies of our time, that's a movie that's been on Netflix. So if it's popular, it'll go where people will watch it. But if we're not creating popular content or not continuing to try, you know, you can't make something be popular, but you can continue to try and make new shows for our children to watch. I, I posed this question earlier to the audience. I've gotten several answers. I want to share some of them today. So I asked the question, what Christian program did you really enjoy watching when you were growing up? If any, because me, I wasn't raised in a Christian household where we were watching Christian shows. I watched Saved by the Bell. I watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I wasn't, I wasn't in on, I mean, I watched Sesame Street as a kid. I watched Mr. Rogers, but I wasn't being shown Christian television simply for the sake because my family was Christian. 
So here's some of the answers. VeggieTales leads the pack out of the gate, and I knew that it would. In the last 20 years, VeggieTales has created more. Just from my own perspective, it working at Lifeway where they had 75% of the children's offerings for media had to do with VeggieTales, the toys, the games, the movies. McGee and me, Jen texted in. She says, my kids didn't get into VeggieTales too much, but I watched McGee and me. I've never seen that myself, so I wouldn't call that a necessarily a popular show, but I'm glad there was something out there that someone enjoyed watching. Kevin texted in. He said, I think Kathy Lee Gifford had a series of movies, but I don't think they were broadcast. So again, this speaks to the fact that, yes, people might be making Christian programming, whether it's for kids or not, that many of us will never see. This is not something we should be excited about as believers. We should be thinking, man, I wish that there was something out there for my kids to watch today. So I don't have to let them, if they're going to watch TV, let them watch just whatever the world decides to put out there. And if the most popular movie of the day is Coco and they want to talk about murdering someone to get ahead, and my kid's going to watch that movie 306 times, that's what they're going to you know, think about. Those are what the thoughts are going to be like. And guess what the Bible says about this stuff? Luke 6.45 says, A good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What does this mean? You talk about what you think about. You do what you've seen done. If you watch movies that talk about making sure money is number one in your life or you watch movies that talk about death and this show on Netflix about the, the suicide, this 13 Reasons Why that's on season number two that people are watching again, that's glorifying the fact that someone could kill themselves because someone didn't like them. These are not the types of shows that I want my kids growing up by because they will do what they see. You'd say, well, well, there are plenty of kids who ha- who aren't committing suicide because of 13 reasons, and you might be right. But we live in a culture where it seems like there's a new school shooting every week, and those kids were watching something. What were they watching? We don't, I mean, we probably don't have all those answers, but to think about what you watch, you become. And even if we're just watching the news and we see all of these terrible reports The devil's got control of these news airwaves, too, by the way, because every story is negative. Every story is this person stole that. This person killed this person. Trouble in paradise. And, you know, the hope-filled stories of the news are gone. We as believers need to be intentional about what we show our children. And so I'm just thinking back over the last years of my life and into my childhood because I wasn't raised in a Christian household, what Christian shows were kids watching when they were my age, and what are they watching today? My wife liked Willie George. This is a pastor down in Tulsa who created an entire children's ministry that started to reach into other churches, and they they made videos and small group resources. And in fact, my wife even went to Tulsa as a kid to go to this big church camp that they had created down there. It was western themed in fact i even went there last year for a men's event that we talked about here on the air my wife enjoyed these programs i i talked to her dad though and her dad talked about how the church that he went to was upset with some of the things that they were teaching because it wasn't denominationally the same as what they had been taught and so even when we're creating programs designed to educate and entertain our Christian children, we get frustrated because it's not, well, that's not the type of Christian that I am, or that's not what we teach at our church. And I just had this thought, you know, isn't events like, if you go to see Winter Jam, for instance, Winter Jam has come through St. Louis, where we take the show many times, comes to the Scott Trade Center, Winter Jam is this collection of Christian artists and comedians and, you know, performing groups who perform in front of sold-out crowds throughout the country. And right here in St. Louis, we've seen 20,000 people show up year after year to watch these Christian acts. We don't not show up because the person sitting next to us might be a Lutheran 
or a Catholic, or this person might not even be Christian at all. No, these events draw people together. And that's what I think like Christian television and Christian shows and Christian movies should be doing. They shouldn't be dividing us because, well, that's an Assemblies of God church. If they're teaching that, I can't bring my Baptist church kids to this. Like, oh, it's so divisive to me. I don't want my children to lose out on having quality Christian programming because Christians can't even work together to put these things out in the open because, well, that's not what I believe. Well, guess what? You definitely don't believe what Pixar believes. You definitely don't believe what DreamWorks Animation believes, but that's the stuff you're going to put in front of your kids anyway. I mean, this is the world. I'm not saying anything's wrong with Disney. I'm not saying anything's wrong with DreamWorks. You can go on a case-by-case, issue-by-issue with the things that they put out. But if if a Christian family is okay with letting their kids watch that, but upset because Willie George makes a Christian program that isn't inside your denomination, isn't there a huge flaw in that logic? For me, whether... I mean, really, I mean... Am I more interested in letting my kids watch anything the world makes versus a denominational resource or movie or TV show that doesn't get everything I believe just right? Major on the majors, minor on the minors, as they say. If Jesus Christ died for your sins and was resurrected as payment for them and he is your Lord and Savior and he is the the way to salvation. All this other stuff doesn't need to matter. Let's focus on these events and TV shows and movies and create Christian content that allows us to emphasize our faith in God and not destroy us, not give us things to watch that are worldly because we can't come together as believers. It's extremely difficult for me as a Christian parent to not think about these things because I want to raise my children and train them in the things that they'll do. And, and when I read numbers like this, this is from Fisher price. Okay. I haven't shared these numbers yet. So Fisher price has a stake in your children because they're going to create toys for your children. I bought Fisher price toys for my children. They've done a number of research studies for people who are, you know, entirely, involved in this process and, and they are they're monetarily compensated by the results of them. They say that the average child spends an average of three or four hours a day watching children, watching television. And if you add on the video games, the computer games, surfing the internet, six hours on average a child does in front of the screen a day. And now with TV screens and internet and computers in our schools, that number is only going to increase as they get older. By the time a child enters kindergarten, this is a secular Fisher Price study, a child will average 4,000 hours of television before they enter preschool. And of those 4,000 hours, they got 15 minutes of Veggie Tales in there. They got. 37 days of Moana in there like my kid does. She's watched that movie so many times I can quote it to you. She's playing. She already knows how to press play on the YouTube buttons. And it's crazy to me to think about how this is affecting our children. Jack over on Facebook says, great topic, John. Hey, I I thank you very much. I appreciate the encouragement because this is something that we don't talk about too much. Jen's over on Facebook. That's an insane statistic, isn't it? 4,000 hours. And if you really try to think about it from a Christian perspective, if you're going to, if this is an average, whether your kid is Christian or not, what are you putting in front of them for 4,000 hours? Have we put enough thought into that as a parent? Because I haven't, to be perfectly honest with you. I haven't said, well, you know, Megan, I'm going to sit you down. We're going to budget out the 4,000 hours that our kids have before preschool. You know, they've got to have 2,000 hours of Christian entertainment. They can have 1,000 hours of the world, and then they can have 1,000 hours of 
uh, you know, miscellaneous. <laughs> we haven't done that. I'm scared for my children. Because if we're not intentional, they will do what they watch. And if I'm not intentional about making sure I understand what they're watching, who knows what bad influence I can be even unintentionally. The Mr. Rogers shows of the world seem so far removed from the culture that we live in today. And when I see this list of Christian programs, and it's just so small. It's so small. You can look at the last two decades of Christian entertainment. And you think, I just did a Google search, by the way, for best Christian shows for kids. Five shows showed up. Five. Five shows are listed. And of the five shows, none of them have been created in the last 10 years. The shows that Google says, these are the best Christian kids shows, they're all made in the early 2000s or older, some in the 90s. Adventures and Odyssey was like the 1990s. Jen over on Facebook says, it's even more scary when you figure the parent isn't always sitting right next to the child monitoring constantly. Exactly right. We can't always know what our kids are up to because we're not sitting next to them 24 hours a day. Those 4,000 those 4, hours they spend in front of a screen, we're not also spending in front of the screen. We've got our own screen time to worry about. What are we going to do? Let's keep the conversation going. Keep your questions and your comments over on Facebook Live. We'll address them in the next segment. When we come back, I have a couple more statistics on what we can do to change our habits, change our behaviors, and leave behind a lasting legacy of shows for our children that can encourage them and not destroy them. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. Hey, everybody. New John Simmons here with you. Back in 2012, I found myself at the end of my rope for what seemed like the hundredth time. I cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life. What happened next changed my life forever. It took me out of my life where I was a gambling addict who had lost over $500,000, allowed me to begin a new life in Christ where I found more joy, peace, and hope than I ever knew existed. I share the stories, including where I blame God for my father's death and the call into ministry that I found in my first book called Finding Faith. I also share with you the answers to the questions that I was asking God about what is faith and how can I move mountains with it. Finding Faith has those stories and so much more. I absolutely believe it can encourage you to find faith in your life today. Finding Faith by me, the new John Simmons, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble website, Walmart. You can also pick up a copy signed by me over at newjohnsimmons.com. Testimony House Ministries is the proud sponsor of the new John Simmons Show. We are so thankful for all of you who tune into the show, watch us live on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Without all of you, the new John Simmons Show and all the other Testimony House Network shows would not be possible. Please visit newjohnsimmons.com today and click the Partner With Us tab to help us continue sharing our message of the future and a hope through Christ with others. God bless. Are you interested in learning more about finding God's sentence for your life? At newjohnsimmons.com, there are articles and videos describing how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life by finding passion, vision, and faith. In addition, newjohnsimmons.com has a variety of ways for you to be encouraged to continue writing God's sentence. As always, you can hear the show live weekdays at 9 p.m. Central Time by clicking the Listen Live button when you visit newjohnsimmons.com. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 but wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay. 
Contact Faithfully Fit, where they hope to strengthen your body in your relationship with Christ. Call 314-239-4149. Every topic is on the table here at WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM. Find passion. Find vision. Find faith. You're listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. Welcome back. It's the new John Simmons Show. Find us over on Facebook at New John Simmons on Instagram or Twitter. You can also find the new John Simmons Show on YouTube and Facebook. Get connected with us. Share your story. Share the show with others to help encourage them to find God's sentence for their life. Maybe we can be a resource for your kids in the future. Much like Mr. Rogers' show was when I was a kid. We talked about this earlier in the show. I said I was going to show this trailer, so let's go ahead and get to that. Let's see if hopefully it works. Well, for some reason, the sound on my computer doesn't want to work sometimes. Okay, so we won't be able to do this. I really want to play this for you. you have to go find it on your own. It's over on YouTube. Won't You Be My Neighbor is the, the name of the film coming out this weekend. I don't know why it's not working. Uh, nonetheless, we'll move on. So I really enjoyed shows like that when I was a kid. Not because I knew it was wholesome, but because they that you left feeling good about it. You left thinking, okay... You know, <laughs> I'm not as miserable as I once was. You s- same thing with Sesame Street or anything that's, you know, attempting to be wholesome. But for believers, what are we producing that's allowing them to get closer to Christ, that's allowing them to understand the teachings of Christ in a way that's not campy or boring? I think this is a main issue that I have, and I've seen others express about Christian programming. It's like, we can't produce a good show. We can produce a, a show with a good topic and a good subject, but it's like our cameras always look like they were bought a decade earlier. Our actors look like they were trained, you know, on the street a week ago. And, you know, we don't ever get, I mean, I guess our claim to fame can be that Nicolas Cage was once in a Christian movie. And he even talked about that he wasn't doing it because he was a Christian. So, you know, we've got Jim Caviezel. You know, if he could just be in all of them. If if Jesus could just be everybody. I mean, he's trying already. I mean, he was in this Paul movie and he played Luke. And he's also played Jesus, so you know he's already he's attempting to play everybody on the movies. But we need some more people like this in our TV shows as well. A couple last points to make here on the subject of what are we letting our kids watch, and how can we better influence them as believers, other than you know be encouraging to people who are trying to make create content. If you see a Christian program, support it. You know, buy the DVD, buy the T-shirt, let it stay on the air. You know, make sure you like it on Facebook or whatever you have to do to support something like that. Don't ignore it. If we want to be able to bring Christian programming into our children's life, we have to support these things. We support all of the multi-million dollar other movies that are made for kids that have nothing to do with faith. The troll movies. You know, we're going to pack out the theaters when that sequel shows up. What are kids watching on TV? According to the Fisher-Price survey we started quoting in the last segment, TV commercials, programs, and movies show attractive, healthy, and successful characters drinking beer, smoking cigarettes, talking about using other drugs. They also include video games and movies that show a lot of sexual behavior, including teenagers and adults dressing and acting provocatively, talking about sex and having sex. Without even talking about it being a children's show, ABC Family, (laughs) ABC Family, I've seen the show Baby Daddy, I've seen a clip of this, a show where a guy got a girl pregnant, they weren't married, and that was seen as a good thing, and he went through a myriad of trying to pick up other women afterwards, ABC Family. That's not a family show. You know, whether you, you think that show's a good show to watch or not, Is it good for our kids? Is that a quality show that we should be putting on the ABC Family Channel? Can't we put that on just regular ABC or maybe ABC Teens or something? Family? I understand that that's common life that people have babies out of wedlock. And I'm not trying to judge this sin or this act right now. I was, you know, we can talk about many people in my own family. Uh, The point of this matter is, is that 
fa- what's what qualifies a family show nowadays? It's not the Leave It to Beaver from the 1950s and 60s. Today's culture, the family shows are centered around sex and violence, our video games, everything. These are what our children are going to watch. If they're going to watch six hours of screens a day, you can be sure that they're going to find some conversations about sex and drugs. And wouldn't you rather either avoid those things in their life or be there when they're taking place so you can cover their eyes or their ears? Because these things are going to be out there for them. But if we're not able to produce Christian programming to offset some of this worldly stuff, we're going to be stuck in a world where either we have to turn the TV off completely for our kids or we just sort of have to understand that our kids are growing up in this culture that we may not be able to stop from getting in their eyeballs. And if that's the case, we have to be diligent with prayer and our thoughtfulness with our kids' lives and who they are and their identity. Because our children's identity are at risk, folks. This is the, this is don't sleep on this. Your children's identity, which everybody wants to that's the word of the decade, isn't it? Identity. I am who I am. No matter how you see me and how you think I am, I am who I am. The identities of our children are at risk because we're going to let the world via television, via video games, via their classmates, tell them who they are. But our identity should be in Christ. God created you. God created your children. He's designed you for a good work through Christ, Ephesians 2.10. He's designed you to have a future and a hope. He's designed you to have a life that overflows with peace and joy. That's what your identity should look like, and it comes from knowing Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if we aren't plugging that into our children's hearts, whether it's a show or whether it's with our own behavior, remember, kids love watching their their parents and following their behaviors. Your identity is in Christ. If it's in Christ, then your children's identity of being in Christ is much more likely to take place. But if you let the world tell your kids who they are and what clothes they should wear, in what TV show they should watch, and what cereal they should eat, and what shoes they should wear, and what kind of friends they should look for, and what kind of things they should be doing with their lives outside of school, and what kind of jobs they should take. You are putting an awful lot of pressure on someone who doesn't care. The heads of these movie studios and the people who create these television shows do not care what your children do with their lives, but you do. (laughs) <laughs> I appreciate you, Den, saying I make a great point. I'm sorry you pressed the button too many times. It's never a bad thing to hit the like button too many times. Just letting you know. Our identities are at risk when we let the world tell us who we are. Because we listen to everything they tell us. You need this iPhone. You need to buy the burger here at Wendy's because it's all beef and never frozen. You know? When we start listening to everything that's told to us and we start doing what they tell us we're no longer listening to what God wants us to do God's plan for us Proverbs 22 6 is to train our children in the way that they should go and they will not depart from it I want to do this for my children and I'm already facing an uphill battle because they're facing 4,000 hours of television on average before they are 5 years old and I'm not going to be sitting next to them. And who's going to be influencing them? Nemo? Moana? Coco? Poppy? I need to be influencing them. And if not me, we need to see some people create some content for our children that's worth tuning into, that focuses on Christ. It's not some campy show or just a cartoon with vegetables in it. Is there anything else? Can we find a new way to entertain and educate and engage with our children? I don't know. I hope that there's an answer for that. I hope the Testimony House can help provide some of these things to your children in the future. But here's the takeaway. Be intentional about what you're putting in front of your children. Their identity is at risk 
Fisher Price says there's all sorts of things you can do, including turn the TV off, choose what shows to watch, keep the TVs out of children's bedrooms, discuss what shows they're watching on TV. That, that you, Come on, Fisher Price. Do you think parents out there are having discussions about what's on with their kids anymore? It's too much. I mean, they're, they have the screens on the bus on the ride home. They have it in their bedrooms. They have it in their pockets while they're standing in line at lunch. Train a child in the way she goes should not depart from it. Children learn more from quality free playtime and watching their parents than any show they will ever watch. This is the statistics of what they say. You want to train your child? Let them watch you do life, whatever it is. Going to the grocery store, reading a book, picking up after your kids, making dinner. Be involved, engaged in your child's life, and they're going to learn a lot more from that than anything you can put in front of their screen. And let them have creative free time. When they say they're bored, good. The statistics that I, that I read we didn't get to tonight, but they say a boredom helps increase a children's motor their motor skills and their mental capacity because it creates a creativity gene has to start popping off in their brain essentially. But when we let the screen take away their creativity by allowing them, Hey, this is what you should do. This is what you should watch. Not allow them to grow identity through their thoughts and their own mental processing. We're going to dumb down our kids because we, they can't think because they've never had a moment to think and have quiet time. You're bored. Good. Go be bored. Go figure out how to make yourself not bored. It's a good thing for kids. That's it for tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook and also on your radio tonight. I love this topic. I can keep going, but uh, we've hit our wall on the time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Curtis, behind the boards. Thank all of you who have tuned in tonight. And don't forget to catch up with us over at NewJohnSimmons.com. Like and share the page over on Facebook. And until next time, guys, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today. Thanks for listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. To replay this episode or listen to past episodes, look for the new John Simmons Show podcast on your mobile device. Stay connected to the show. Read the latest news, blog posts, and see behind-the-scenes photos by following at New John Simmons on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you would like to learn more about how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life, Join a growing community of people who are finding passion, vision, and faith for their lives. Please visit newjohnsimmons.com. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life.